What is a personal statement and do I need to include one when filing for my claim? Well, the answer is yes. Let me explain. Stick around. Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy Lee and welcome to another episode of the Warriors Edge channel. Again, the purpose of our channel is to provide guidance, motivation, and education to the benefits that you, a former member of the United States Armed Forces, are entitled to. Uh, now, if we haven't met, my name is Leon Nubla. I am a retired police officer, a veteran of the United States Army, and a 100% rated disabled vet. And in today's episode, I want to talk about the importance of a personal statement. Now, you know, at its very, very core, uh, the VA looks at three types of evidence to help establish your claim, okay? Uh, the first being medical evidence. Now, medical evidence is exactly what it sounds like, right? It's black and white, tangible evidence that shows in your mil military medical file that a particular event led to um, your now disability, right? Whether it's um, an illness or an injury, okay? Now, the second category is where your personal statement actually lands, and that is uh, lay evidence, right? And that could be buddy statements, it could be news articles, it could be anything else, you know, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, outside of the medical uh, evidence category, okay? And then the third one, of course, is the medical expert opinion evidence. And that's, of course, coming from their CMP examiners when it's time for your CMP exam. And, of course, the medical professionals that you employ to help you with your, you know, with your claim file, okay? And so now let's go back into... The second category, which is lay evidence, where your personal statement actually lands that category, right? And again, the importance of it is it, it's it's incredible, right? So unless you have like something clear cut showing in your military medical files that you in fact suffered, you know, again, a, an injury or an illness that's now causing your disability, a personal statement can do wonders, wonders for your claim. Picture this, all right? We're gonna go into a hypothetical on why a statement could be advantageous for you, okay? So let's say you're a VA evaluator and you have mounds and mounds of paperwork from a claimant. And this claimant is saying that he's suffering from a particular condition. And now you have to sift through all that paperwork to establish a nexus between what the claimant is actually saying and what's on record, right? Uh, again, more work for the evaluator. Now, second hypothetical, same claimant, same situation, but now that claimant actually has a statement. And in that statement, it, it, it describes how he suffered the injury, where he suffered the injury, maybe dates of when it happened, and what he's doing now to help him uh, treat the injuries or illnesses that he sustained while in the military. Again, it gives you a clear and concise picture to the evaluator on why you deserve the rating that you're requesting for. All right, since we established why it's important to write a personal statement and, and, have it, and having it and be included uh, with, your, with your claim file, um, let's go over some tips on how to actually write your personal statement, okay? So tip number one, you don't have to sit down and complete it in one sitting. Um, just do a little at a time. Do what's comfortable. Do, um, do what you can um, at a particular sitting. That way you're, you're not pressured to complete something that might lack information when you turn it in. Okay, so, you know, just take your time and do it, but do give yourself a deadline so you just don't, you know, put it off and, and forget about it. Do give yourself a deadline when completing it. Okay, so tip number two. Tip number two is uh, before or while you're in the process of writing your statement, um, go over your medical files and see if you can pull some important dates um, that is associated with the actual or with the particular claim that you're filing for. Um, that way it makes for a more solid uh, information for the uh, for the evaluators to see when they're reading your file okay and tip number three uh, be detailed and be straight to the point okay um, you certainly don't want to give someone a five or ten pager where it, they'll lose interest you know reading it or you know they might not um, or they might just or the information that you're trying to that you're trying to actually you know project might just be lost in the whole you know the whole cloudiness of having too much information okay so make it straight to the point make it clear and concise try to make it you know not too long and um that way whoever's reading it um it actually can can extract the information that they need from it instead of you know having too much on there where it just becomes a mess all right and so now let's uh let's go into drafting uh your statement hey guys so if you found value in this episode thus far please support our channel by hitting that like button also subscribing to our channel and if you can hit that bell button for future episodes all right so that would really really i would really really appreciate that if you do that 
Um, again, so now let's, uh, let's get into how you draft your statement. And again, I understand that we all have our own writing styles. This is just a recommendation on how I actually wrote each of my statements, all right? So let's go with the first step. And now there's five steps to this uh, on how to draft your, your statement. And uh, so the first step being um, start your statement uh, with a paragraph explaining your current living conditions, uh, such as you know the family that you're supporting, what line of work you're doing, and, and a brief description of what you do at work that ties in to your disability. Okay, okay that's the first step. Now, step two, uh, on the next paragraph, explain what you did in the military and how you sustained the injury or the condition that you're, that you're claiming for, all right? And now you might have two or three paragraphs about that, but that should be your next section, okay? Um, so for step number three, um, explain how, it, it's, how that condition is currently affecting your daily life and how it hinders um, your job performance now at work, um, how it might not be, um, how you might not be able to perform physical activities and how it's giving you, you know, social anxieties and so on and so forth. All right. And that should be your third step. All right. Step four, um, explain what you're doing now to treat your condition. Um, are you doing physical therapy? Are you seeing a psychiatrist? Are you doing self-care? Uh, and if you're taking medications, what type of medications you're taking and what effects uh, those medications have on you when you take them, okay? So that should be your fourth step. All right, so the, uh, the fifth and final step uh, should be um, wrapping your, your statement with asking the evaluators to evaluate you fairly by means of your statement and all of your medical evidence, right? Um, I think a lot of vets make the mistake of being, of feeling entitled that, you know, they, that in their statements, they're demanding to get the uh, the benefits that they think they deserve, and you don't want to come across as that because uh, it's just it's just a bad look. So again, guys, a quick recap on the steps here. So step one: start by your by by explaining your current living conditions um, and what you're doing for work nowadays and how that disability is affecting you at work. Okay. Uh, step two, of course, is uh, explain what you did in the military. You know, explain your MOS and how you sustained your injury. Step three. I explained how this disability is affecting your daily life, how uh, you can do some of the things that you would like to do or that you can no longer do because of it. All right. Step four, um, explain how you're treating it, what you're doing to, to help yourself with the disability that you actually incurred. And of course, step five, just wrap it up, wrap it up and, and, and be respectful and, 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 and just ask for, you know, ask that you be evaluated fairly. Okay. Uh, again, don't, don't, don't come across as being entitled. It's just, again, I, I don't recommend it. Hey guys, so hopefully those steps actually helped you in creating and drafting your, your own personal statements. And finally, before I let you guys go, I have a bonus tip for today. And that bonus tip is really writing your personal statement as a sworn declaration, okay? You want your personal statement to stand out. The last thing you wanna do is write your personal statement on form, on VA form, 21-4138, which is a standard form for, for pretty much anything that the VA requires as a supplement. And the last thing you want is that your, your personal statement um, just gets lost in, you know, in, in the pile of evidence that you turn in. Okay. Uh, a, a great reference that I use is a guy, an attorney um, on, on the internet that actually gives really, really great advice. Again, I'm not affiliated with him, um, but I have used them in my journey to, uh, to actually get all of my benefits. And his name is Chris Attic, and he has a, a template that you can actually use to create your sworn declaration, which I'll include in the description below. So again, guys, uh, I, I wish you guys the best. Hopefully, uh, the information you guys got today was beneficial. Again, uh, be good to yourself, be kind to others, create and take action. It's your boy Lee, and I'm out.